Hello everyone, this is Vishwas and uh, welcome back to our Webpack series. If you are following along with me, like um, as a part of this series, we have covered most of the topic and currently we are working on optimizing our bundle further. When we talk about the optimization, till now we have covered like how exactly we can extract the CSS as a separate file. For that, we have used mini CSS extract plugin and we have separated out our CSS file from our HTML. Then we talk about the development and production mode. And in production mode, we see how exactly the HTML and CSS are minified with the help of Treasurer Webpack plugin. Then we also see how exactly we can minify our CSS. And for that, we have used CSS Minimizer Webpack plugin. The same plugin is also used to remove the duplicate CSS. Internally, it uses the Nano CSS and it does lot of CSS minification and optimization for us. After that, we have seen how exactly the Perch CSS plugin is used to remove the unused CSS. And uh, then we saw how exactly tree shaking works in HTML5 production mode. Then as a part of last video, we've seen how exactly we can implement the file hashing and how can it beneficial us for the long-term caching. And as a part of this video, let's start working on code splitting. To understand the code splitting, I have made some changes in our current application. I have added two more dependencies. One is Lodash and another one is DayJS. So let's understand the visual representation first for our final bundle. And then we will work on actual implementation. Now, if you look at our visual implementation in our code, like we have two separate entry file, right? One is index.html and another one is explore.html. Both the entry point having their own JavaScript file and their own CSS file, right? Now I have added Lodash and DayJS as a dependency in both the bundle to understand how exactly we can do the code split and optimize our bundle further. If you look at here, when we talk about both the bundle, right? Index.bundle.js and explore.bundle.js file, both the file contain Lodash as well as DayJS dependency. It is duplicated in both the bundle and which will increase our final bundle size. And here now code splitting comes in picture. With the help of code splitting, now what we can do, we will remove the common dependencies from both the bundle like Lodash as well as DayJS and keep that as a separate bundle. That means index bundle contain only the things index bundle, then explore bundle contain the specific thing, which is only for explore bundle. And finally, our common bundle contain the things which is shared. This way we can implement the code splitting and optimize our bundle further. Now to understand how exactly we can implement the code splitting first, let go to the VS code and see what changes I have made in our existing application and how our application currently looks like. Let's move to the VS code and see more details. Now, if you seen my previous video, we continue working on our Webpack optimization application and I have made few changes in it. If you go to SRC folder and look for my index.js file, like uh, I have uh, added the Lodash and DayJS dependency. And uh, also if you go to explore.js, I have added same dependency here as well. And now if you look at our application and now if I click on this particular header, we will see current date with the help of DayJS library. And uh, then you are also seeing the final bill 
where I have used add function from Lodash and calculated some result. Also, if you go to explore more page, we will see I just printed the date and time here. For that, I have used the DayJS library. And again, I have calculated some bill. For that, I have used Lodash library. This is just added for demo purpose to show how exactly code splitting can be achieved if you have same dependencies shared across multiple entries or multiple pages. Now, to analyze our current bundle, let me go to the VS code and now run our application in development mode. Code splitting should be achieved in development mode so that our bundle should be optimized for production. For that, I will use command npm run dev. When we execute this command, our bundle will run in the development mode. And now to analyze, let me go to the dist folder. And if you see the two different chunks gets created, one is explore.bundle.js and second one is index.bundle.js. Now, if I go to index.bundle.js and look for Lodash, right? We will see the Lodash library is imported here. Uh, then if I look for DayJS, you will also see the DayJS is also available here, right? And now if I go to explore bundle, you will see the same library is also imported here. The first one is DayJS. And now if I look for Lodash, it is also available here. Now, if you look at here, we just have two different chunks and we added a couple of common dependencies, right? That is Lodash and second one is DayJS. As our application is small and we have only two dependencies, so we are easily able to identify the dependencies are duplicate in both the chunk. But if our application is growing, like we are working on big production ready application and we have multiple dependencies, right? Then it is very difficult to find like which dependency is used by which chunk and if there is any duplicate code is present in our bundle, right? And to analyze our bundle in this situation, the Webpack is providing us the very beautiful plugin and that plugin name is Webpack Bundle Analyzer. Let me add that plugin and see how exactly it helps us to analyze our bundle. For that, I will use the npm install. The plugin name is Webpack Bundle Analyzer. Yes, our plugin is successfully installed now. Let me go to our dev webpack config file and uh, import that plugin, right? For that, I will use const here. And we need to use or import this plugin as a named export. And uh, the name of that plugin export is bundle analyzer plugin. Let me import it now. For that, I will use required and uh, I will use Webpack bundle analyzer here. Copy this plugin. Now move to the plugin section and add this plugin with new keyword. Let me save the changes and now run my build again in the development mode. Let's wait until it's complete. Now our bundle is successful. And now if you go to Chrome, it automatically open one page for us. And this is the output of Webpack Bundle Analyzer plugin. This plugin help us to get all the chunks and find their dependencies. Now, if you look at here, currently we have two main bundle. One is index.bundle.js. It's having node module. Then the biggest dependency is Lodash here. And if you look at our second bundle, right? Explore.bundle.js. It's having its node module folder and the biggest dependency is Lodash here. 
And now, if you look at here, this small part, right, you will see the DayJS library is available here. And along with this, you will see some more small libraries, right? And also, if I go here, you will see the DayJS is available here as well, right? That means both the bundle having some duplicate code and the biggest dependency is Lodash. Now, let's go to the VS code and start working on actual code splitting. When we talk about the code splitting, we don't need to explicitly install anything or we don't require major code changes. This is handled by Webpack 5 automatically with some small configuration. And the configuration is very simple. For that, we need to use the optimization field here. If you look at my production bundle.js, right? We already started using the optimization for our CSS minimizer plugin. And uh, we also use this spread operator to use the existing optimization of Treasurer Webpack plugin, right? So we will add similar optimization field in our development mode and see how exactly we will achieve the code splitting. For that, let me add the optimization here. Optimization will be object. In this object, we are expecting one property and that property name is split chunks. This will be object again. And inside this, we have one more property called chunks. And in chunks, we can use value as a all. Only this much configuration we will require when we talk about the optimization. Webpack internally uses the different plugins to do that optimization, right? And when we are using split chunk property, it internally uses the split chunk plugins to do the code splitting for us. Now save our changes and run our build again. For that, I will use npm run dev again. Let's wait until it's complete. Now our bundle is successful. And if you look at here, right, you will see one more bundle gets added here. That means we already have the index.bundle.js. Then we already have explore.bundle.js and Webpack added one more common dependency. Now what happened as we are using this optimization split chunks plugin, the Webpack automatically figure out all the duplicate dependency that is used across both this bundle and that is added as a separate dependency here or separate bundle here. Now let me go to my explore.bundle.js and search for Lodash. We will see some dependency of Lodash here, but actual library is not available here. Same if I do for day.js, we will see only references, but actual library is not available. And same will happen with the index.bundle.js. And now if you look at newly created bundle, you will see both the dependencies are added here. So this is my Lodash. See, Lodash is added here. And same for day.js. See, day.js dependency gets added here. And now if you go to Chrome and look for the output of our Webpack bundle analyzer plugin, you will be amazed, right? It make drastic change in our bundle, right? Now, if you look at here, the biggest chunk is the common bundle that is created by the Webpack, right? And it's having all the common dependencies. That means Lodash, if you look at here, the DayJS and everything, right? And if you look at in this corner, this is our actual code dependencies, right? Let me zoom it. And uh, if you go here, you will see this is my index bundle.js. And uh, if I came down, you will see this is my explore.bundle.js. This is how we can analyze our bundle with the help of Webpack Bundle Analyzer plugin. And then we can do our code splitting with the help of optimization option. 
from webpack 5 now let's go to the vs code and try similar option in our production bundle.js file and see the output now in production mode we already have the optimization available so i just need to add the property split chunks it will be an object it will take one more property called chunks and uh, here i will provide the value as all let's save these changes and now run our build in production mode for that i will run the command npm run build let's wait until it's complete now our production build is also successful and now if i go to the dist folder you will see new common chunks gets added here and uh, it will contain all the code for your lodash as well as dejs and other common libraries and our remaining two original chunks present with optimized and minimal code i think this is all about the code splitting one of the important topic from the webpack and uh, very useful when optimizing our bundle further that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you in next one till now thank you